Islam. My name is Mohar, the Moorish Martian. I hail from a solar system called Tau Ceti, which is 12 light years or 4 parsecs from your solar system. Tau Ceti is in the Cetus constellation, and is also very close to the Zeta Reticuli binary constellation. We have informed the scientists of your planet, that the name we call our sun star is Tau Ceti, and the planet from which I reside is called Tau Ceti E, the fourth planet from our sun star. There are also beings who reside on the fifth planet from our sun star called Tau Ceti F. I am related to the species which has frequently visited your planet which you have called Greys. However, the pale gray ones that frequently visit your planet are from Tau Ceti F, which is a planet farther away from our sun star than my home planet of Tau Ceti E, and this is why they are pale and gray in appearance, because their home is farther away from our sun star. My species, which is much darker in appearance, come from the planet Tau Ceti E, which is closer to our sun star. For the purpose of your understanding, you can consider me a member of the melanated Moorish gray species. On the Earth date of December 2012, the scientists of your planet discovered that both the planets Tau Ceti E and Tau Ceti F, which orbit the sun star Tau Ceti in the Cetus constellation, are two exoplanets in the habitable zone capable of sustaining life. Evidence which further supports our existence coming from Tau Ceti in the Cetus constellation occurred on the Earth date of September 1961, when the Greys abducted Betty and Barney Hill, which was the first widely publicized claim of alien abduction amongst you humans. While aboard the Greys Starcraft, Betty Hill asked the Greys to tell her where they were from. The Greys showed Betty Hill a star map of their home constellation, but Betty Hill was not knowledgeable of constellations, so she did not understand what she was shown. However, when Betty Hill was returned to Earth after the abduction, she was put under hypnosis and asked to draw the star map which she was shown by the Greys, and the star map that she drew under hypnosis matched the stars near Tau Ceti and the Zeta Reticuli constellation. My species visited your planet eons ago, and we set off a chain of events which led to the creation of your species. This is why we consider you our children. The area we settled on your planet, we named Tau Ceti, in remembrance of our home planet and sun star Tau Ceti. Our children modeled the building, construction, and architecture in Tau Ceti after the architecture found on our home world of Tau Ceti. This is why the Nubian pyramids in Tau Ceti align with the stars near Tau Ceti and the Cetus and Zeta Reticuli constellations. You can even still find the name Tau Ceti in the hieroglyphics on the walls in ancient Egypt. Prior to coming to Earth, we stopped off on the planet you now call Mars, and we built a civilization there. This is why you find similar pyramid structures on Mars which can also be found in ancient Egypt, Tau Ceti, and also these structures can be found back on our home world of Tau Ceti. We even built a face on Mars which is wearing a fez to prove that we did indeed visit Mars. Look man, I can't make this shit up. I promise I did not go animate some shit and put it out. Alright. Look man. Love to the bro. <laughs> Love to the bro Chris Duncan man. <laughs> yeah man. <laughs> Mars on Mars man. <laughs> Still got a fast, but you know, it's like a European, it's crazy, you know. Um, I mean, maybe that's the maybe that's what it is, man. Um, yeah, man, I, I don't know, it's no way, man. In my wildest imagination, <laughs> in my wildest dream, could I have dreamt that uh, someone would send me something like this, man? So, <laughs> love to the homie Chris Duncan, man. Cause it's got me weak, man. <laughs> you got me weak, man. Oh. <laughs> oh, you hit my funny bro. Oh, man. Woo. I think we all needed that. I got to kind of run it back, if you don't mind. And, uh, yeah. You know, let's just go ahead and get at it.
all the way on back. I think it's worth it. <laughs> I think it's worth it, man. You, you thought this was play play? You thought uh, the Prince of your Bay and uh, Noble Drali, Atlantis, and you, all this is going back. All right. Then you got the Spirit Science ripping o open the dimensional tears. Now, don't get lost in the hijack. I want you to see this through the eyes of Giannini. All right, go back to the world's beyond the poles. Let's just try this for a minute. Let's serve this particular wave. Why not? They have no answers for us. Why not be speculative? Not, why not look for repeatable and observable science? Let's be scientific about this shit. So if there is no outer space and everything is inside the firmament, all right, even in there, you know what I'm saying, uh, cosmology in Egypt, they got the goddess Nut, you know, spread out as the sky goddess, you know, covering, you know, uh, protecting that which is under her. Then you got her brother Geb, you know, laid out, you know what I'm saying, as, as the earth, you know what I mean? But she's arched over like a dome, you know, the same thing like the Hebrew cosmology, everything that we're getting out of Enoch. Now we're getting the Giannini worlds beyond the poles. All right, so we're getting the celestial the connected celestial star here. So when they say Mars, they're not talking about some far out outer space. When they say I'm from this constellation, they're not talking about no far outer space place. Everything is within the barrier. Everything is within the celestial barrier that thought cannot, you know what I'm saying, penetrate. He has to keep moving in circles that have little known angles. Running from the hounds of the barrier, the angels that are only moving in angles, that the angels that are protecting the firmament, the barrier that as soon as they get a sniff of this thought, they release that loud bell cry that can be heard from cycle to cycle, right? So, nah, man, I, I can't make this up. I want you to dig on it. Yes, Moors on Mars. Yes, this is what the this is what they connecting. This is what we've been connecting through. Prince Uriel Bay through Noble Drew Ali and even a little bit of that spirit science just to kind of, you know what I'm saying, fill the gaps, man. So, all right, man. All right. Let's, let's try this again. Let's go. Islam. My name is Mohar, the Moorish Martian. I hail from a solar system called Tau Seti, which is 12 light years or four parsecs from your solar system. Right, so Twelve light years, I'm saying. Look, if the sun is only, you know, maybe a few thousand miles away, then we're talking about, you know, very close celestial sky areas. Remember in Giannini, when they were doing these, uh, you know, stratospheric experiments and finding the connectivity, all these connected areas, and how these globular illusions you know through the telescope and how we've been given it through this perspective of this global or outer space scenario when in reality everything is very close very connected when you look up and you see space and all that darkness could it be the water above and could those bright lights actually be these celestial areas these actual areas that you can go straight and go into you go straight long enough, you will go up. Up is straight. Straight is up. I mean, it sounds, you know, absolutely like, you know, something that will spin your head around. But go back in that series and we're going to get right back in it because we needed to start bridging, you know what I'm saying, our wave a little bit with reality. We're not, when we speak of truth, we speak in reality, man. When we say, man, you know what I'm saying, love to all our bros, you know what I'm saying, everybody, man, is building positively, man. So, if you are more, you're building positively. If you, you know, comedic science, you be, I ain't over here to, you know, rip anybody. It is, but we're looking for reality, man. We over here surfing on reality, bro. We're looking for the indigenous truth, man. And that shit speaks volumes, man. The hijack is real. So we all got to come up out of it. We all got to unite, knowing that we got rolled up on, invaded on. But the invasion is deep, man. The treaties are deep. Let's listen to the Moorish Martian. I mean... Mars on Mars, right? We got that. Go back and get that drop. We'll get back in the Prince Ariel Bay. We're going to build on this because this is what they kick it. All right. Momar, the Moorish Martian. 
Zetus constellation, and is also very close to the Zeta Reticuli binary constellation. We have informed the scientists of your planet, that the name we call our sun star is Tau Ceti, and the planet from which I reside is called Tau Ceti, the fourth planet from our sun star. There are also beings who reside on the fifth planet from our sun star called Tau Ceti F. I am related to the species which has frequently... And it's very interesting because as you see this star system approaching, that's why I always like to play drop from the uh, WSO, Steve Olson, you know what I'm saying, uh, Wayne Steiger, you know, BP Earth Watch, any of these guys that, regardless of their hijacks, they're at least, you know, really focused on, you know what I'm saying, shit they ain't nobody telling us about what these star systems are, these orbs that are being seen all over. Um, you know, when some were claiming Nibiru, then they started tying in the Jupiter connection and realized that Nibiru is Jupiter. It's always been the planet of the crossing, the X, you know what I'm saying, Jupiter, Zeus, is Zeus, you know, all that cross, Nibiru, cross, Zeus, Jesus, cross, Nibiru, cross, all right? It's all been connected. So when they say they come from this system, are they coming from the same system that is approaching today? When we see all these orbs, it looks like a whole system of orbs. System like a, you know what I mean? But, you know, what are stars? What is this system? Is it terraforma planets? Or are we talking about a celestial sky area that is moving in? A area, a sky area that is moving in, a connected area. All right, water's above, water's below. We visited your planet, which you have called Grays. However, the pale gray ones that frequently visit your planet are from Tau Ceti F, which is a planet which farther away from our sun star than my home planet of Tau Ceti E, and this is why they are pale and gray in appearance, because their home is farther away from our sun star. My species, which is much darker in appearance, come from the planet Tau Ceti E, which is closer to our sun star. For the purpose of your understanding, you can consider me a member of the melanated Moorish gray species. On the Earth date of December 2012, the scientists of your planet discovered that both the planets Tau Ceti E and Tau Ceti F, which orbit the sun star Tau Ceti in the Cetus constellation, are two exoplanets in the habitable zone capable of sustaining life. Evidence which for So they're getting life from these areas, so when they're getting these feedbacks, these radar, bounce backs, whatever you want to call them, they're getting signals from these celestial sky areas. Now, these are not outer space terraforma, but connected areas the same way that, you know what I'm saying, you got mountains and trees, they got mountains and trees, you know what I'm saying? You keep going straight, you run into more land, more area. The earth is bigger than you can ever imagine. Beyond this, earth, this is all a system, people. You're in an area of it. And they fooled us by pointing telescopes saying that we're looking at outer space when really they're just looking at the ceiling. They're not even penetrating the barrier. They can't see out or nothing. And this Tau Seti, 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 Set, Set, Seti, Seti, Set, Set. All right, you got your Atlantean Egyptian Set, Seti, Tau Seti. Listen up. I can't make this shit up, man. Further support I can't for make existence this shit coming from Tau Ceti in the Cetus constellation occurred on the Earth date of September 1961, when the Greys abducted Betty and Barney Hill, which was the first widely publicized claim of alien abduction amongst you humans. While aboard the Greys' starcraft, Betty Hill asked the Greys to tell her where they were from. The Greys showed Betty Hill a star map of their home constellation, but Betty Hill was not knowledgeable of constellations, so she did not understand what she was shown. However, when Betty Hill was returned to Earth after the abduction, she was put under hypnosis and asked to draw the star map which she was shown by the Greys, and the star map that she drew under hypnosis matched the stars near Tau Ceti and the Zeta Reticuli constellation. My species visited your planet eons ago, and we set off a chain of events which led to the creation of your species. This is why we... In other words, they tore holes in the dimensions, right? And let ripped open dimensional tears and let in these lower vibrational beings. And I said, well, then who would be the, you know, what is this energy 
of this so you know this this invader today you know this parasitic energy just to use up resources and rape and pillage everything and and take all this from here to there and keep spreading and spreading and using and spreading and oil and killing the atmosphere what energy is this is this the energy that came and fell in when these motherfuckers was doing these experiments and they ripped open dimensional tears and they tore open shit and released or let in these lower vibrations that then started inhabiting bodies possessing motherfuckers now you got this shit all over the place everything's jammed up because of these guys they just admitted it they keep admitting to all these experiments they're doing the mind top we got to get into that man this is my last part man this is this is the final part i'm moving on i figure since i did a six-part series on the sink in egypt you know what i'm saying this would be a continuation another six-part series on the sinking of the entire Moroccan Empire, Atlantis, Egypt, Thoth, all that energy that hijacked the Creator's Earth, that claims dominion on the Creator's Earth with their laws and treaties. Coming over here, hijacking us from where? Mars? Mars? Fuck that. We rock Earth, nigga. We rock Earth. Earth is our turf. Don't hijack us. We hijack free. Let go. Consider you are children, but the area we settled on your planet, we named Tosseti, uh -huh. in remembrance of our home planet and Pyramid. star Talseti. Pyramid. Our children modeled the building, construction, and architecture in Tosseti after the architecture found on our home world of Talseti. This is why the Nubian pyramids in Talseti align with the stars near Talseti and the Cetus and Zeta Reticuli constellations. You can even still find the name Tosseti in the hieroglyphics on the walls in ancient Egypt. Prior to coming to Earth, we stopped off on the planet you now call Mars, and we built a civilization there. This is why you find similar pyramid structures on Mars which can also be found in ancient Egypt, Tosseti, and also these structures can be found back on our home world of Tosseti. We even built a face on Mars which is wearing a fez <laughs> to prove that we did indeed visit Mars. Oh, man. In fact... <laughs> I can't make this shit up. Now, do y'all see the pattern of destruction that these motherfuckers leave behind? Do you see that they leave a pattern of destruction behind? Oh, look at this other celestial plane we were on. It's all effed up. We did some experiments. Oh, look at... Uh, let's, let, let's hijack Earth. Let's hijack this particular plane. Oh, for father and son, right? We'll do it for father and son. Over here will be ham. Over here will be Gush. And then what? Destruction. Destruction of Atlantis. Then Egypt. Destruction of Egypt. Destruction. 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 Everything is. All their pyramids are gone. Look around. Where's your pyramids? Where's your pyramids? You bring these outer Merkabas, these synthetic Merkabas to us. You tear open, rip open dimensional tears. Jam everybody up. Now we over here blaming the white man for everything. When, and honestly, it is your creation. Let go. Act, the name of the planet Mars was derived from the word Mars, uh -oh. which is the name of my species. The Moorish melanated grays from Tau Sati. And this is why Looney Tunes patterned the character of And now they got some Looney Tunes shit. So, I mean, I think we can just get from this, man. If you're going to claim Mars, then how are you going to claim Africa? How are you going to be Mars and Africa, Boop? What's this, Boop? What's his name? Boo Boo? How are you going to be Mars and Africa, Boo Boo? Something smell pretty shitty to me. You can't claim Mars and Earth, man. Oh, the entire galaxy is yours. The universe is yours. <laughs> now what? Oh, but Thoth still can't get above the barrier. Right. So the universe can't be yours unless you're talking about the underworld underneath the barrier. I can't wait to get it back into the flat drop so that we can uh, fully comprehend what's going on. So yeah, man, true to life. You can't be claiming Mars and Earth. 
and then wonder why there's a lineage that has a problem with that made here by the creator here from here repping here we rep earth you rep mars so you rep the god of war you rep the zeus you rep all that but we just don't rep those celestial hijacks we only rep the creator you see so you can tear open the dimensions you can let in the vibrations you can do the cern you can do the montox you can rep for morocco everything Moors rep for Shem, Moab rep for all Moabites. Joshua was just jamming y'all up. But when you step into reality, either you're representing the greater light or the lesser light. And when you're running from the barrier and you can only move with permission from the Pharaoh, you're representing the lesser light because the Pharaoh runs from the hounds of the barrier. Marvin the Martian after my species, because they know the truth. However, they have still yet to uncover the true power of my Illudium P-36 explosive space modulator. <laughs> All right. See? I mean, I can't make it up, man. I love the Chris Dunkey. Yeah, I almost lost my mind the first time I saw this. I said, what? I mean, it was like one of them things where he's like, man, you know, it would be dope if I could see, if I could find a great alien with a fez on, repping Mars, after what we got from uh, Prince Uriel Bay, man, so we're going to get right back to it. Ooh, all right, man, all right, man, all right, man. Man, love to the fam, love to the drive nation, love to everybody becoming water everywhere you are. I mean, love to everybody who wants to be static. I mean, you know, choose your frequency. Not everybody's going to choose up, so for those that choose down, you know what I'm saying, let it be, so let it be. Yo, 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 um, yeah, finally got to get to this, man. I've been wanting to get to this Asir, the Duke of Tears. I get a lot of drop from this king, man, a lot of drop, man. Um, but this right here is, 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 is exactly what is uh, tying into what we're building on, so let's see if we can pick it up from... Uh, Right about it. Let's go. Yeah, man. I think they're going to try to oh snap. And when you have some verifying documentation as well as as uh what do they say uh governmental uh right. governmental uh acknowledgement to the fact which is what we did when we established our central uh private get government that back a little bit people here in let's get that back if we are representatives of the empire so how are you a representative of the empire you're a representative of the empire when you have verifying documentation as well as as uh what do they say uh governmental uh governmental uh acknowledgement to the fact which is what we did when we established our central uh private government of indigenous moors and people here in the united states and did it properly all the way from from the bottom to the top top to the bottom and in the process all right, so they need the the government recognition, right? They got to file this paperwork to get this paperwork to get recognized in here and this and this and this. And this is how the game is played in the celestial heavens for the fallen angels, for those under the barrier. They have these rules and they shun you for looking above the barrier. They, they shun you for saying, is that the creator's rules? Is that what the creator intended? Or is this is how you getting over what energy is it in you that just wants to take over for Moab? Because you have a union with the Ammonites and the Amalekites and the Canaanites and it's all one big confederacy. And the only people that don't know who they are is the ones that's about to go play Sunday, you know what I'm saying, uh, the Super Bowl, you know what I'm saying, Sunday night football, NBA. These Hebrews here, your people here, Everyone talented doing whatever they doing here, 
don't know who they are. Don't know that some people went into captivity and some people did not. Some people signed treaties and some people did not. Ah, um, man. Love to the fan, man. You know what I'm saying? For sending me this joint. He got a lot of uh, joints I want to come through, man. And it's not, again, a breakdown of frequency, but a realistic perspective of our own. You know, we're forming our own realistic perspective. We're putting on our own, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Set of eyes, you know what I'm saying? We're looking at it from fresh eyes, from fresh, pure water here, man. And if you can't explain this shit, then you're going to have to get down and lay down. You're going to have to admit when it's good and when it ain't. When you're in the goods and when you're in the bad. You're in the goods for you, but you're in the bads for those that suffer based on these confederacies, based on these treaties, based on these uh, crafty councils. You know what I'm saying? The government of indigenous moors and people here in the United States and did it properly all the way from, from the bottom to the top, top to the bottom. And in the process of learning all of that out, I found out the fact that there is a specific contingent that is within every free national government in the world that when we, as the true Americans, step up into our capacity, the people who have been acting, who have been perpetrating themselves to be uh, the United States, they now have to take the back seat. And all of the reparations, all of the redress of grievances have to be made and brought due. So the only people that can bring them to pocket to do that are the original Americans, and the original Americans are the original olive-colored, copper-colored uh, people who were here prior to the European invasion. Um, the the prophet Noble Jali said when the European came here, he found... Now, were the olive-colored, copper-colored, now were they all Moroccan? Were they all Moab? Were they all in these confederacies? Or were there those that were, have, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> had nothing to do with the sultan? Had nothing to do with Islam. Did Thoth hijack, hijack Jerusalem? Did Louis Mong, did the false Christ hijack Jerusalem? Did Jerusalem exist? Is Jerusalem wherever the people are? And wherever the people are, is Moab a thorn in their side? Making treaties for the inheritance of the house that belongs not to them. The indigenous Americans, Americans, Americans. The indigenous Americans. The ones with the birthright here. Indigenously, your genes, your genes are connected to your birthright here. Those are indigenous those that were not given a lot here, sons of lot, daughters of lot, that were not given a lot here are not indigenous here because your forefathers were trespassing and you are the treacherous Templars. Signing treaties for a house that is not yours, is not your birthright. You can't pretend based on the European perspective. Oh yeah, you got the drop on that. You're indigenous based on the European. But the other more, the other great, the kingdom, Preston John, King David, Jerusalem, Cusco, city of David, did not rock with the Sultan. And that's what us so-called Negroes are waking up today. Oh, we do have a choice. And you do go by bloodline. And there are Moabites. So Jacob's children are alive and well. Now Moors living up and down the Mississippi River. So what that then means is that we have a precedent as Muslims to be able to establish our own constituency outside of the present decaying uh, a Roman United States Empire prior to their civil war. Why? Because we have a government that was already here. And we go back into that government when we enforce the Constitution through our declaration. Your declaration of nationality is more powerful than you think. But if you are leaving it up to other people to do it for you, you're going to be done. Because this guy, Trump, he's here about, put it this way, when he found out he was going to win, the first thing he did was got on the call to Putin and it told him, look, I know what's going on with these people and I'm not trying to go to war with you. And they're retaliating right now against me by shooting all of these black people and all that in the street. 
because the more black people and children that they get rid of, remember, these are the original constituency, the, the descendants, the remnants of the original people of North Central and South America who consolidated themselves as a government and fought against the decaying old corrupt Moorish Empire between 1511 and 1776. The so-called Caucasian people didn't get into the war until 1774 when they realized that if they didn't back us up, they were going to be perpetually enslaved to Britain. So you hear there's two Moorish empires. The, the Europeans got in later, so we're talking about melanated family and melanated family. So they're going to call them the dirty Moors. They're going to call them the other. But do you hear about these guys? Where's these guys? Where's their side of the story? Who are these people? You know what I'm saying? These are the, you know what I'm saying? When you see the separation, then you say, well, you can't just lump everything and say, oh, the copper color races. We do this for, you know, all these Muslims here. Man, dodge the hijack. Let's get that again. Government and fought against the decaying old corrupt Moorish Empire between 1511 and 1776. The decaying, the decaying old corrupt Moorish Empire between 1511 and what, 1776? One more time, man. I mean, what war is this between melanated brothers? One's calling the other one the old decaying Moorish Empire. Okay. Of the original people of North Central and South America who consolidated themselves as a government and fought against the decaying old corrupt Moorish Empire between 1511 and 1776. The so-called Caucasian people didn't. Now, 1776 is what the Declaration of Independence. So you fought against other melanated family up until 1776, when conveniently there was a Declaration of Independence and an establishment of the corporation that only got established based on the treaties and the help they got from these Moors. Are y'all following this shit? It's confusing. Confusion, man. Confusion, confusion. So two more families. Then the European gets in, okay. Get into the war until 1774 when they realized that if they didn't back us up, they were going to be perpetually enslaved to Britain. So what they decided... So if they didn't back these Moors up, they would be in perpetual servitude to Britain now obviously when you get the etymology of Brit Brit covenant Brit Britain you get this covenant and you get the OGs now I wonder how that connects to the you know what I'm saying to the Picts and the clan Ross and Bruce's you know what I'm saying ruling uh, these uh, Scottish Highlands and all the royal Israelite blood you know what I'm saying that was up against that shit over there are these those other Moors they're talking about? Are they talking about Israel? I'm just surfing the wave. I don't got to be right. I could just ask the right questions. All G, because we're all building together. You know what I mean? It ain't about being right. So um, we're just asking the right questions. So, I mean, so if these Europeans don't help, they'll be in perpetual servitude to Britain. Now, is these Britain people a, you know what I'm saying, Hijack word for these Russes and Rosses that are over there whooping their ass there. And then the Europeans realize that, okay, um, we need to bond with you because we're getting our asses kicked, kicked by these Russes and Rosses. Hence, Russia, Russia. One more time. In 1776, the so-called Caucasian people didn't get into the war until 1774 when they realized that if they didn't back us up, they mm. were going to be perpetually enslaved to Britain. So, so they had to back them up, see? So they needed each other. They were going to help fight against their cop. Look, it's the enemy of my enemy, my friend. They had common enemies. They both had enemies, and they were the Picts, the Russes, the Rosses, the Hebrew Israelites that they Moab been warring with the whole time, the whole time. All throughout the Jeremiah, you know what I'm saying, 28. All throughout the Joshua's and one, twos, and threes, and the, all that. 
you go just look up Moab Israel war and you'll see it all throughout Chronicles everywhere so what are we getting at what are we getting at these Europeans now make a treaty now they are now you're gonna hear them talking about the treaty of friendship and peace where we're gonna get right quick Moorish Empire between 1511 and 1776 the so-called Caucasian people didn't get into the war until 1774 when they realized that if they didn't back us up, they were going to be perpetually enslaved to Britain. So, so there was a melanated war. So who were the other melanated people and why do you call everybody Moors? And how can this be the divine plan, the divine vision for the world? If you're warring with other black people, Moors and you're calling them Moors. You call them dirty ass, punk ass Moors, whatever you call them. <laughs> All right, you hate they ass. I get it. You hate Israel. I get it. You hate Jacob. I get it. You hate Joshua. I get it. Because they bring you into reality where thoughts, imagination, you know, just uh, dissipates. I get it. But this ain't it. And if you're going to war with other Moors and this ain't Morocco, that means someone else had another vision. So they made a deal with the devil to fight against their brothers. He just called them Moors, so they were his brothers. And they made a deal with the devil. The European didn't even get into it to 1774. What? What? That means that up until 7074, when slavery started back in 14 something, all that war was them kicking your ass. Did you just hear this shit? They said the Caucasian got into this shit in 1774, which just dropped it all on the A shit that you would put into captivity by your own brothers. Oh, when? The first thing he did was got on the call to Putin and told him, look, I know what's going on with these people and I'm not trying to go to war with you. And they're retaliating right now against me by shooting all of these black people and all that in the street. Because the more black people and children that they get rid of, remember, these are the original constituency, the, the descendants, the remnants of the original people of North, Central, and South America who consolidated themselves as a government and fought against the decaying old corrupt Moorish Empire between 1511 and 1776. The so-called Caucasian people didn't get into the war until 1774 when they realized that if they didn't back us up, they were going to be perpetually enslaved to Britain. So what they decided to do was join up with the uh, Lenape people, the Moors, right? And they came into a union with them, which created what they referred to as the United Kingdom over here. So they joined up with the Lenape. All right, man. So you know my man Turtle Gang represents the Lenape. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I'm just getting it from this, bro. So I'm just going to surf it. Okay. 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 So he said that they was fighting their own shit before the Caucasian from 1511 or something like that. Now, isn't that conveniently, uh, what, 1492? Now, 1511, they go to war against their old Moor brothers. Now, we hear about the takedown of Prester John. We hear about the takedown of King David. By Genghis Khan, they say. Now, who is these other Mongols? And are these all the more Mongols? Is Mongol a code word for the war that was going on with one group of Moors with another group of Moors? Was Genghis Khan melanated black Genghis Khan, the one that we showed you before? Love the dub styles, my man Cap. He's a... He's, Genghis Khan clearly said, represented as a black man. So that was a Moor. So is this Moor representing their gang? Has their gang been, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, running at Morocco, you know, all that Moab, you know what I'm saying, whatever the case is, from that? And is gang got, Genghis Khan representing the takedown, uh, taking down Prester John or King David, letting the dangle do eat, Raja here, Raja. Watch out for Preston John 25, coming at you live. All right, I mean, these are ways that we can surf the wave because they hit a lot of drop in Mongol. So they make a deal with the devil. They go to war with you in 1511. 
He just gave all the drop, and it's worth truly hearing it as many times as we need to to understand that you was already divided. America, who consolidated themselves as a government and fought against the decaying old corrupt Moorish Empire between 1511 and 1776. So all right, 1776, that were fighting against the decaying one. In their perspective, it was decaying this Moorish Empire. More of this great empire is that Jerusalem that they took down. So called Caucasian people didn't get into the war until 1774 when they realized that if they didn't back us up, they were going to be perpetually enslaved to Britain. So, what so they say, Caucasians, you better back us up because we want to hold on to Muslim Jerusalem, and you don't want President John King David kicking your ass no more. He's been kicking Muslim ass, so let's all get together. And they made a confederacy with the devil. And that's why they are so, you know, keen into their maritime, maritime law, legal, celestial system. Because they created it. And it puts you down. They decided to do was join up with the uh, Lenape people, the Moors, right? And they came into a union with them, which created what they refer to as the United Kingdom over here. And when that was done, they adopted, the Lenape adopted the Union Jack as their flag, right? And they became lead subjects in, in uh, accordance with the so-called Brutish Moors. Now, I don't know what these hands things is. I guess that's a Masonic thing, how they be standing. And they keep making like these pyramid, you know, pyramids and, and crisscross with their fingers. You know, this is some job I just don't know. I ain't judging it. I just don't know. I just don't know, <laughs> but maybe it comes from Mars. Who themselves now, they wanted to break away from their overlord, our cousins and them, George, and them from England. So here we are. To our cousins, George, see? Yeah. They want to break away from our cousins, George, in England. Right quick, man. Right quick. Y'all just have to wave at me right quick. Uh, let's go, Jesse Ben. Hopefully, I can get this. Andros. Let's get back in that Andros, man. Because we're talking about it. He's talking about it. Now, his cousin George breaking away from them, those are the dirty Moors, I believe he's referring to. The dirty Moors. His cousins that they're warring with already. The corrupted ones. And they all want to break away from his cousin George. Right? All right, quick, man. Let me see. I thought this was some drop on George in here. Just belly flopping. All right. We got King Charles the First. Uh-huh. It says, most Europeans at this time were in shock and feared the words. Andros can be found at Abbas, Coombe Bay, Somerset, England, which happens to be the ancient home of the Knights Templars. Remember that we connected the Templars, which, of course, the Moors said it was all some more thing, but they were treacherous Templars, and those were other Moors. So you had a combination of those that were rocking with the Sultan and those that were rocking with the Creator. But... The whole purpose was hiding these secrets so you couldn't really fuck them around. It shows that the roots were part and parcel with the Franks in forming the Knights Templars. And this supports my findings that the Franks and Russians, Russians were the same stock of peoples of the Red Ones. House of Andreas from the race of Andrew and the kindred of the kings of Jerusalem. But it's also... Allowed Andros to marry outside of Seal Andreas, which is what they were calling it. Now let's find that George. Just want to get that. Got King Charles. Oh, yeah. Always oh, reminds me of some more drop I want to drop. Of course. All right.
Yeah, I know we got the St. George here. Um, I mean, St. Charles here. I know they related that somewhere to George, man. I'm going to see it as soon as I look later, I swear. On the morning, 6, 1637, Amias Andros was knighted by King Charles I and called Saint Maurice or Saint Maurice. So Saint Maurice that they're claiming is Amias Andros, knighted by King Charles I. Knighted by King Charles I. And I can just do a separate search here. Let's see, King... Charles first. And let's go King George. See what they say right here. St. George. King George. George the First, King of Britain. Of course he ain't looking like that. Ireland. Let's see, August 1774, King George. Alright. I want to see his relation with Charles. We definitely have to get into these Jacobite uh, uprisings because that's when we were getting into, uh, you know, this King James revolt, man. Let's see. Charles, Charles, Charles. Where are you, man? Too much time with it, but I don't know. Man, I gotta find this another time. Before I lose my train of thought and lose too much more time. All right. Man, all right, all right. If y'all be doing research, man, y'all know how this is. Sometimes when you see something and you mean to. Keep it, man, because it's you know it's gonna be relevant. And uh, all right, all right, all right, all right, you know, I just be researching with y'all, man. Some people just you know do it their own way, but I like to do it with y'all because you know, so y'all can feel it with me when I find what I gotta find. We get that next step together. All right. So. Let me go to this George. So, okay, okay, that's what it was. Because he mentioned uh, King George. All right. So, let's go to where we got here. King George of Britain. And we have August 17, 14.
tell of two kings. This might be interesting here. This might be something. All right, Americans have traditionally viewed the war for independence as a revolt against the authority of King George III. This is certainly true. Uh, all right, let me skip down. They needed only to look at the career of English King Charles I and did so frequently respect of Charles I loomed behind the figure of George III. I know I'm going to find this man as soon as I let go. As soon as I let go. All right. Where were we? Man. I really want that. I really want that. Let's keep it rocking. Let's keep it rocking. You know how it go. All right. So let's back it up. Let's back it up. Let's get it from his Lego. I'm going to find that though, man. Man. They adopted the Union Jack as their flag, right? And they became lead subjects in in uh, accordance with the so-called brutish Moors, who themselves now, they wanted to break away from their overlord, our cousins and them, George and them from England. So here we are 200 and some odd years later. And that's what I was looking for. But I was looking for it in another document where it breaks down George and George's relationship and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know what I mean? So I'll find that. But anyway, check out the separation. So my cousins and them, our cousins and them, George and them. Right? You got the Dirty Moors, cousins and them, George and them. Let's go. The perpetual way that this started, right? This had its beginning all the way back under a king named Edward the Black. They called him uh, Edward the Third, who was Edward the Black Prince. Man, hold up. <laughs> See, I was gonna leave it alone, but you just brought up Edward the Black. And there's so much research in here that I know relates to this. And I know I'm gonna end up getting it later. All right, King Edward. Okay, okay. All right. Edward the Black. Then over here you got Sir Edmund Andrews. All right. King Edward the Exile. It said 1016, late 1057. Also called Edward Aetheling, Aetheling, son of King Edmund, Ironside of Aelgoth, after the Danish conquest of England in 1016, Canute had him and his brother Edmund exiled to the continent. All right, wherever the continent is, Edward was only a few months old when he and his brother were brought to the court of Olaf, Scott Konung. With instructions to have the children murdered. Olaf knew they were family members. Instead, the two boys were secretly sent to Kiev, Rus, Russia, where Olaf's daughter, Engelgird, Irene, was the queen. So, instead of murdering these boys, all right, Olaf spared them, sent them to his. 
His daughter, Irene the Queen, later Edward, made his way to Budapest, Hungary, probably in the retinue of Ingergit's son-in-law, Andras 1046. He was supported and successful bid for Hungarian throne. Alright, alright, alright. And then it says here, and for those that don't know, in 1660, 1674, Sir Edmund and Edmund Edward Andrews was the Imperial Executive of the United States from the House of Stuart and family of Queen Anne of Denmark. All right, so was this Edward, you know what I'm saying, some some hijack playing into the system? Or, I mean, hearing back from what my bro was just kicking, you know what I'm saying, going into that war against those other Moors, one more against another Moor, from what, 1511, he said, to 1776. So this is during that time. This is 1674. These must be those other Moors, those Andrews. Now, he just brought up King Edward. All right, so yeah, you know, I was looking for that George. I really want to find it, so I apologize, man. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you really want to find something. You know, I'm, I'm only human. I'm only human, but I get like that, man, because, you know, I, I know I know, I seen something, man, but I'll find it. But, um, yeah, so check it. So he did mention Edward, so he just called it Edward the Black. We also have it Edward Andrews. So now we have a possible very possible connection because we're talking about somebody called the Imperial Executive of the United States. Now, this could be a complete hijack scenario. I haven't really looked in a recon. It's Sir Edward uh, Edmund Andrews. But we're only talking about the hand, House of Andrews, and of course, they're going to, you know, make it seem like some white thing, but we just got that there was a melanated thing, and this was the war going back and forth with the dirty, what they're calling the discombobulated uh, corrupted Moors from their perspective. And maybe they are the same from the other perspective, the treacherous Templars. We just got Sir Edward Andrews or Edward the Edward Black. Edward the Black. Let's get that last part. Themselves now, they wanted to break away from their overlord, our cousins in them, George and them from England. So here we are, 200 and some odd years later. The perpetual way that this started, right, this had its beginning all the way back under a king named Edward the Black. They called him uh, Edward III, who was Edward the Black Prince, who happens to be a Moor, right? But Bang. So we're talking about Edward Andrews. We're talking about their family. Now, what they're not connecting is that these people are Israelites. Let's go. On the white side of the family, he is allegedly direct descendant of both Donald Trump and Hillary. Right? On the white side of the family, he's an alleged direct descendant of Donald Trump and Hillary. Now, he just called him Edward the Black. And he just called him a Moor. And we also have a Edward, King Edward, the exile, all the way up into where was it? Where was it? Where was it? Well, I'm skipping right over it. Mm-hmm. Then we got the Black Queen Philippia of England. So you have Edward the Black. You have the Black Queen here. Oh, right, here we go. All right. You have Sir Edmund Andrews had paternal feelings for the new nation, but remained loyal to the crown and stayed with the Queen and his family before him. And the greatest part of his legacy is that he had a voice and power in the affairs of the nation building. The consummate mediator, Edward, seemed to be very fair and looked at all sides of any dispute. His problems started with King James II policies of establishing Anglian churches. So, you know what I'm saying? Whatever, you know, the hijack, whatever the queen, ah, 
Let's go back a little bit more uh, to the Black King. I mean, these are, you know, we got to dig through this. Is this, who is this, Edward? Who? <laughs> who is this guy? You know, I did a little recon before, and yeah, you get this, you know what I'm saying, you know, uh, you know, Caucasian, you know what I'm saying, situation, but is he? I don't know. I mean, I, I, I'm not affirmative yet that we're not just talking about, you know, a uh, melanated, you know what I'm saying, more Israelite from the house of Andrews, Edward Andrews, when he mentions Edward the Black. Another author wrote, take a trip to America was like taking a trip to Mars. Come on, man. I can't make this shit up. I can't make this shit up. I'm not the one that's giving you uh, Moors on Mars. I'm not the one that just told you Moors are on Mars. You've been getting Moors on Mars. You've been getting that from Prince Uriel Bay. We got this from this Aminavi Ray of Atar. All right, it's taking a while to load, but you know what I'm saying. I'm not the one that brought this shit up. I'm not the one that brought you Mars on Mars. They brought you Mars on Mars. They called it Mars. Mars. All right, think about that next time you have a Mars bar. Yeah, man, I'm going to leave this link, man. You know, hopefully it, it works a little faster and better for y'all. But check it. Moors on Mars, taking a trip to America was like taking a trip to Mars that Charles II, the black king, didn't want to make. So he chose Sir Edward, Edmund, Andrews, Andros, Andras, Andres, Andrews, and his many relatives. Oliver Cromwell did not leave for America himself. Uh, hold on. Islam. My name is Mohar, the Moorish Martian. Uh, look man I'm not the one that brought you Chris Duncan did this to you man he put the fans on the gray man he put the fans on the gray alright man let me get this out of here alright man alright man chill out chill out chill out All right. hope that's cool alright Sir Edmund Andrews had paternal feeling for the new nation alright alright all right, all right, Taking a trip to America was like taking a trip to Mars. All right, so Charles II didn't want to make it, so he sent Sir Edward and, and uh, Edmund Andrews and his many relatives, he said. Now, he and his other members of Parliament had the king executed in 16... Wait, oh, uh, went to King James I. So Oliver Cromwell, not able to leave for America himself, wanted King... Charles the first head to enrich himself. He and other members of parliament had the king executed in 1649. So King Charles was executed in 1649. Remember that's still in between the time that the brother was kicking with this war between more and more. 1511 to 1776. Conveniently, this corporation is set up in 1776 on you. You on plantations on your own land. With treaties on top of you. Many Andrews, Andrew Andersons, Ross, and others left England for America in the early 1600s. So this war is going on there. This war is going on more and more. So, you know, we're just trying to put this together and say, okay, well, who are these Moors? Because these particular Moors seem to be connected right to these Rosses and Rooses, these colored laws, this, this, this America, these roses. If the master plan was for the red Creoles and white to enslave, to enslave to the black African rose with the red rose away from Europe, the law of percentages and greed would enslave the red and black roses and call them colored roses. From there to the present, we have white separation, colored law, slave mentality, black and white stereotyping in America. Now, what roses are we talking this is a tournament of roses they have. A tournament of roses. All right, let's get a couple Hail of from a solar system called right, Tau Ceti. Come, come on, man. Which is 12 light years or 4 parsecs from our solar system. Always damning us up, man. Tau Ceti is in the Cetus constellation. Come on, more, more. And, and fence sitters and all these other people want to throw all of these different things and try to throw more. 
more, 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 the more. On the bus, as well as all the dirty okay. ones that, per, that, that perverted cool. what the prophet left, that perverted all this other <laughs> shit, because y'all niggas is willing to get on the on Jam that, up jokes. All right, let's go. YouTube and pull out hammers and stuff to talk about how you gonna bust this nigga for knowledge and this, this, and that when this practice out here literally shooting babies down in the street every day. Y'all right. laughable. Right. So again, you have no... But just like how the white man said, there are no laws by which the white man is bound to respect the laws of the black man. I can say the same thing because white is the highest cat. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Right? When, you, and if we dealing with a, when you're dealing with thoughts, you know what I'm saying? You're dealing with thoughts technology, man. So you got to be real patient. Sometimes you're looking for links and shit disappear. You're dealing with thoughts. Man, look at this, man. They, they, they just completely are doing some thought shit right quick. Because thought don't like it, man. But, but thought kind of do. Thoughts want to be free, man. So it's just the minions. It's just the minions we talking about. All right, man. Come on, man. All right, man. I'm done. I'm done with that. I'm done with that. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. So where do we go from here? Only to the Treaty of Peace and Friendship between the United States of America and Bay and subjects of Tripoli and Barbaria, the Hairy Barbarian, Thoth. Take me to the land of the Hairy Barbarian after Atlantis is sunk. To the land of Kim. Under the Pharaoh's permission, so. Yeah, this is out the Yale Law School, Yale Law School, the Barbary Treaty, 1786 to 1816. All right, so this is the treaty set up right after the war that you lost, apparently. 1776, they won it, apparently. The Corporation of America is set up on top of you, straight up. I mean, real crooked-like, though. Call it the Treaty of Peace and Friendship, signed at Tripoli, November 4th, 1796. Treaty of Peace and Friendship signed at Tripoli, November 4th, 1776, at Algiers, January 3rd, 1797, original in Arabic. So they just, you know, all right, let's check it out. So Article 1, all right, so remember, this is to the eyes of those that have to do deals for the house that they don't own. You don't do a deal for your bedroom in your house. You don't let an invader move into your house. Not even your garage, right? Would you let an invader move into your garage? Or would you man up, soldier up, warrior up, all out, but they didn't want that. They wanted that connection so that these Europeans can back them with these same, what they're calling corrupted Moors, which were only the Israelites, the Hebrews they've been fighting. So their Article 1, there is a firm and perpetual, perpetual peace and friendship between the United States and the Bay subjects of Tripoli and Barbary, of Barbary. So this is forever. Remember the 1452 perpetual servitude of the dumb diverses, all right? So this perpetual peace is forever between them and the corporation. The corporation and the Bay and subjects of Tripoli of Barbary are made of the free consent of both parties and guaranteed by most po most potent day in Regency of Algiers. Now, it's all good because any goods belonging to any nation with which each of the parties is at war should be loaded on board vessels belonging to other parties that shall pass free so they can't jack each other's shit. If they jack your shit, you can't come and jack their shit even though they jack your shit. The, the corporation ain't going to jack the shit that they jack because they already jacked it. And they got a treaty that said you can't take the stuff that we jack. So you can jack what you jack and we can jack what, you, what we jack. And that's the hijack, Jack. Article 3, if any citizens, subjects, or efforts, or effects belonging to each or other, to either party, shall be found on board a prize vessel taken from an enemy by another party, such citizens or subjects shall be set at liberty. So if any citizens of Morocco, Moor, Moab, any other treaty, people covered, you know, in the Zodiac, if any citizen, subjects, or effects belonging to either party should be found on board a prize vessel taken from an enemy by another party, such citizens or subjects shall be 
set at liberty. So you got to free us if we get if we get caught slipping. All right. So if Preston John got them, and then some Europeans roll up on Preston John, and they get Preston John's you know prize vessel, and the Moors are there in captivity, they have to free the Moors. That's why the Moors never went into captivity. The Moors never went into slavery with you, so-called Negro. Hebo, Eber, Eber. The Moors never went with you there. These Moors. Those Moors did. Those, <laughs> you went down as these Moors. And then those Moors did treaties against you. You are them. They are. <laughs> I know it's just confusing, but just flow with it. All right, so. This family and that family. So the family that got conquered is the ones that went into captivity. Article 4. But they only got conquered with help of the European. All right? Proper passports are to be given to all vessels of both parties. By which they are to be shown. And considered the distance between the two countries. Eight months from the day. I mean this was. Look this is a detailed treaty between them and the corporation. Article 5. A citizen or subject of either party having brought a prize vessel condemned. By the other party or by any other nation, the certific certificate of condemnation and bill of sale shall be a sufficient passport for a vessel of one year, being a reasonable time for her to procure a proper passport. Vessels uh, of either party putting into ports of the other or having need of provisions of other supplies, they shall be furnished at market price. I mean, they were, they had negotiated prices of these you know of, of the transportation of these vessels should a vessel of either party be cast on the shore of another all proper assistance shall be given to her and her people i mean look at the, what this says man because this is a treaty between them and the enemy the corporation that is now enslaving the indigenous people here of Jerusalem, of mexica mexico that's how they rolled up. That's how Cortez and them rolled up. But did they have help? Did they have allies? Yes. And what would happen if Cortez's boat broke down and he had 100 Hebrews in captivity? If this Caucasian, if this so-called Europeans vessel broke down and was cast on the shore, these other Moors... These Moroccan, these Moors from Mars, have to give Cortez or Columbus or De Soto, Bernal Diaz, they have to give them all proper assistance and their people. No pillage shall be allowed. The property shall remain at the, at the disposition of the owners and the crew protected and secured till they be sent to their country. They have to protect these Europeans. From you, so-called Negro. Oh, but now we're all more. Now we're all just rock, man. Look, come on, guys, join, join the Moroccan Empire, because they made treaties like this. Who makes a treaty like this with the devil? Oh, devil! If your vessel breaks down, uh, devil, I got you, devil. You know what I'm saying? I'll give you all proper assistance, devil. No pillage. Nope. No, nope. Nobody's going to touch you, devil. The property shall remain at the disposition of the owners. When you make a deal with Thoth, you make a deal with the devil under the Pharaoh's permission. Everywhere you go is underneath the Pharaoh's permission, underneath Thoth. Everywhere you go. Hold up, man. Because it gets too real. Too trill. Real spill. When everywhere you go is underneath Thoth, man. Oh, Thoth. This is getting out of control, Thoth. This is one world order, Thoth. America's under the Pharaoh's permission, Moroccan Empire. Atlantis, Moroccan Empire, under Thoth's permission. Oh, we have Kush, Kush. All oh, this is the dominion of Kush. All oh, this is the dominion of Ham. Is that the creator's lot? Did, did the creator divide this or is this a Mars time lot? A Mars 
perspective, a thought perspective? Is it order or chaos? You see, chaos is chaos. Even though, you know, we can have a, have a perspective that all chaos must eventually be in order. Some things are created as chaos. And yes, the creator does what he wants with static. But static is static and static will stop you. Jeffrey Dahmer ain't in order. Jeffrey Dahmer eating people ain't working for the creator. But sure, on some perspective, he's creating enough static. That somehow may be leading to order. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's hard to justify, you know, these murderous villains and say, oh, the creator, uh, you know what I'm saying, is using these people to do this stuff. Now nah, he, he, he's given, you know, a time frame, man, where this is allowed. And we did it to ourselves. We did it to ourselves. We have to purify. And no, when we look at reality, we will see our own brothers fixing the boat, the vessel. If either, should a vessel of either party be cast on the shore of another, all proper assistance shall be given to her and her people. No pillage shall be allowed. The property shall remain at the disposition of the owners and the crew protected and secured till they be sent to their country. This is what they were doing. For the so-called European, the invader. Oh, America now defined as the European born here in America, but used to be a copper color race. It used to be the copper color races. But now you say America, you know, your title is gone. Why is it gone? Because there's been a treaty of peace and friendship with that which came to take your title. The only reason why you're not called American anymore, anymore, more, oh, more. Nah, man, the only reason why you're not called American anymore, more. American, a Native American, originally applied to the indigenous they say aboriginals, you know, indigenous, the original, or copper colored, copper, dark, deep copper, found here by the Europeans, but now applied to the descendants of Europeans born in America. That's just the 1828 Noah Webster Dictionary. So how did it get to this? How did it get to this? If a vassal of either party should be attacked by an enemy within the gunshot of the force of the other, she shall be defended as much as possible. So if you start letting off on Cortez with bows and arrows or whatever, then they have to come and get you because, you know, you're fighting the European. They had to protect the European. Don't you get it? The commerce between the United States and Tripoli to protect it to be given to merchants Masters of that look, man. You read this. You read this. It's disgusting. This was protecting the European. This was protecting, but now apply to the descendants of European born in America. And they want to ask, well, how come we're not American? We're the original. Don't complain now when you helped make this happen. Don't complain now when you open up and tore holes in the dimensional layers opening up for these lower vibrations don't complain now when the copper color race has no more title because now america's applied to those europeans europeans descendants born here because you brought them here to do what help you right i mean i'm not making this shit up i don't think uh, where you go? Where's my pen? <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, 
this shit is asinine when you really break it down, man, and, and put on these, uh, you know what I mean, just, just, just fall back, man, and meditate on this shit. It, it's absolutely asinine. It's absolutely crazy. The nerve of these guys. The gourd of these guys, man. I mean, you're saying to us right in our face that you're setting it off. Made and brought due. So the only people that can bring them to pocket to do that are the original Americans. And the original Americans are the original. olive colored copper colored uh people who were here prior to the european invasion um the the prophet noble jarley said when the european came here he found moors living up and down the mississippi river so what that then means is that we have a precedent as muslims to be able to establish our own constituency outside of the present decaying uh a roman united states empire prior to their civil war why because we have a government that was already here and we go back into that government when we enforce the Constitution through our declaration. Your declaration of nationality is more powerful than you think. But if you are leaving it up to other people to do it for you, you're going to be done. Because this guy, Trump, he's here about, put it this way, when he found out he was going to win, the first thing he did was got on the call to Putin and told him, look, I know what's going on with these people and I'm not trying to go to war with you. And they're retaliating right now against me by shooting all of these black people and all that in the street. Because the more black people and children that they get rid of, remember, these are the original constituency, the, the descendants, the remnants of the original people of North, Central, and South America who consolidated themselves as a government and fought against the decaying old corrupt Moorish Empire between 1511 and 1776. The so-called Caucasian people didn't get into the war until 1774. Now enters the so-called white man in 1774. Before that, Edward the Black. King George the Black, they over here wanted uh, independence from the other so-called black people, you know what I'm saying, in England. So they, along with these other Moors that had their own gripe against these so-called black people, these Israelites, these Hebrews, these Picts, these Russes and Rosses, these Preston Johns, those were the other Moors that called it a decaying situation. Well, I guess it was all decaying. I guess Atlantis kept the cane. When they realized that if they didn't back us up, they were going to be perpetually enslaved to Britain. So what they decided to do hmm. was join up with the uh, Lenape people, the mm -hmm. Moors, right? Mm -hmm. And they came into a union with them, which created what they referred to as the United Kingdom over here. And when that was done, they adopted, the Lenape adopted the Union Jack as their flag. Right. Now that's after the Europeans joined with the Lenape, formed the United Kingdom over here. Now they have the Union Jack flag. And they became lead subjects in, in uh, accordance with the so-called brutish Moors, who themselves now, they wanted to break away from their overlord, our cousins and them, George and them from England. Hmm. So here we are, 200 and some odd years later, the perpetual way that this started right this had its beginning all the way back under a king named edward the black they called him uh edward the third who was edward the black prince who happens to be a more right he's a black on prince the white side of the family he is allegedly direct descendant of both donald trump and hillary oh, okay so he's still calling him you know what i'm saying a a dark more but he's saying that you know some of their white offspring are Trump and Hillary. All right, so whatever. That's the white offspring of this melanated man. All right, man. But you can see, look at his face. Like, oh my gosh, his his offspring are Donald Trump. Ah, well, maybe that means that Trump might not be so bad for certain of us. <laughs> if if he's our offspring, if that's what if that's what it is, if that's are these moors and then those moors, and Trump's the offspring of those moors. Maybe Trump ain't so bad. I don't know, man. I'm just talking shit. But yeah, man. You know, you see that there's a discrepancy. That there's a differentiation. That there's Moors on Mars. Oh, man. Yeah, man. There's Moors on Mars, man. I don't think you understand. This is real talk. It is also very close to the Zeta Reach at QI binary constellation. Ah. We have informed the scientists of your planet 
but the name we call our sun star is Tau Ceti, and the planet from which I reside is called Tau Ceti, the fourth planet from our sun star. Seti, Seti, Seti. All this popped off Atlantis. All this popped off Egypt. And it goes to a celestial place called Mars or Mars. But you have this treaty of peace, they say. They come in peace, they mean war. And they meant war. 1786 to 1816. This was your takedown, my people. Man, man. So... You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Shit is for real, man. Shit is for real, man. <sighs> All right. So, you know, we got enough out there, Emerald Tablets. I was going to get some more, but this is the last part. As you can see, I'm tired, man. I need to get some sleep. But this is part six. And, um, you know. I think we uh, left enough out there for us to come back to at another time and keep digging like we just did to get our own perspective and keep building. Um, you know what I'm saying? We got this thought whereby thoughts rebelled against thee and set up his present heavenly dominion inspiring his followers under the name Muhammad. And now behold, thou hast since that day tried to destroy him in heaven and on earth but Thoth was anchored in earthly possessions in Jerusalem and Tethys in Egypt so all this Thoth wanted all these possessions oh Thoth wanted everything his earthly possessions is all about possessing you possessing you possessing you man so hey I'm gonna, uh, you know what I'm saying? I definitely advise everyone to come check out this, uh, which is page 777. The judgment upon the Brahmins, the Buddhists, the Christians, Christians, and Mohammedans, the Confucians, the Jews, and all other peoples on earth. In the words of God, think not, O man, that I am insufficient to the times and seasons, or say that thou, God, spake in the dark days of the earth, but later. Holdeth his tongue, behold, I am thy elder brother, even as a captain of the earth in her heavens for a season, as I am. Even so were my predecessors in the time of the ancient ambassadors of the Most High, Creator, whose power and wisdom are given unto me, even after the same manner are thy earthly kingdoms governed and disciplined, whereby order may be, may contribute to the resurrection of all his created beings. First I charge thee who saith God, God calleth in vain. I am not come to establish but to, to abolish all gods and lords and saviors among mortals. For what is past is past. For whoever henceforth heareth my word and the decree of my commandment and continueth to make an idol, an idol of any name. Save the great spirit, save the creator. You make a idol in energy you serve an energy a celestial energy other than that which is above the barrier the great spirit blasphemeth against his creator thought did not create you the dweller did not create you horus osiris inky and enlil did not create you they had their own creation and was it you was it you so-called negro but whoso crieth out in fullness of heart saying god god meaning thereby the ever-present the creator is not blasphemer before me so some people still you know what i'm saying they ain't really ain't turn that over they still say god but they mean the creator they you know we, we may know that god backwards is dog and all this stuff about god is not a pure way of saying creator but you know what i'm saying some of the fam might be there they might say man i'm just talking about god you know god and they mean the creator. That's not blasphemy. You know what I'm saying? If you don't know. You know what I'm saying? If you're not trying to call on another God. You know, in your ignorance of that. Alright. Let me get this. Let's get down. Let's get down. Alright. And whoso saith Christi, Christi, Christ, Christ. Signifying a God and the figure and shape of a man sitting on a throne in heaven. Is a blasphemer against who they call in Jehovah, hey, hey, Hawa, the creator, and all person, the all person. You picture Jesus on the throne next to your creator, 
sitting on a throne in heaven, blasphemy against the Creator. There is no other Savior beside me, Isaiah 43, and whoso calleth on the name, any name, of any man other or angel worshiping such as a God or is an idolater in my sight. Nor do I judge them less idolatrous than though they worship stone, idols, or graven images. Now let's get down to, you know, to this judgment of Muhammad. All right. This is wherein the Christians have suffered a people to fall from knowledge into ignorance or from virtue into vice. My judgment is against them. Wherein the Mohammedans have suffered a people to fall from knowledge into ignorance or from virtue into vice. My judgment is against them where beggary and vagrancy and all manner of darkness have increased in any of the cities or countries of any of the idolaters. My judgment is against thee. They shall not excuse themselves nor escape my judgment by saying, Oh, the true Brahmin, or the true Buddhist, or the true Mohammedan hath not fallen. These that feel for such as embrace not our doctrine in fullness of heart. All right, these that fell, these that fell were such as embraced not our doctors, doctrine in fullness at heart, because my judgment is also against impot impotency. Impotency, impotency. Uh, you know what it means to be impotent? Impotency. That means you ain't making no seed. That means you know, there is no fruit. My judgment is against you if you have no fruit. They have tried their respective religions hundreds of years and they have not raised up one city of righteous people, man. Where's the city of righteous Mohammedans? Righteous. Keeping the law of the creator righteous. A righteous city. A city of righteous people. Where's the righteous city of Christ? The righteous city of Muhammad. The righteous Jewish city. Man, the righteous people are asleep. Wherefore I have come to put these doctrines away and give them that which shall prove itself potent in all the world. That which I proclaim shall be proclaimed by the angels of the second resurrections unto all nations and people. Let me get this last part here. Nor shall any man more say, I worship the Brahmin principle or the Buddhist principle or the Kayawan Kayawan principle. We're talking about the Confucians or the Christian principle or the Mohammedan principle for all of these have proved themselves to be result in war and destruction. None of them have faith in the creator but faith in the armors of soldiers and in their weapons of death. But I give unto all people one principle only, which is to serve Allah, the creator. This is broad enough for the redemption and resurrection of all men. And I will have none other. I will have none other. First rule, no other power before your power. But Thoth came as Muhammad and he raised up against his big homie Louis Mong. So, Get some more out of that, man. Let's get a quick bit, man, from the bro, hey, man. Yeah. Uh, Rastafari uh, uh, sabbatical. Rastafari sabbatical. Dropping on a little bit of these more with bikes, man. We just surfing the wave, man. We're going to get a dismount into the Prince Yuri Obey. We got a little time for that. So, yeah, man, thanks for bearing with me, man. You know, this is, uh, like I said, the last part. I said, man, let me just stay up one more night. And have it his home, man. So I might fall back, man, for a couple of days, man. Rest on up. You know what I'm saying? Hit the gym or something, man. Feel good, all right? But yeah, man. Um, yeah, love to this brother, man, because he, you know, has always uh, provided great drop, great information, man. You know what I'm saying? To uh, dig on. So let's go. <laughs> Where should I begin, all right, on this particular subject matter right here? More by test? Masonry. I probably should put Freemasonry. In fact, I'm gonna do one more search. I've been here on um, one of my co-laborers' machines right here, doing a little search. Right. So now we like to work offline, but then we have to come search. Right. And searching for an image that wouldn't open up. And our search, of course, is Moabite. Now. 
my brother had put up a little particular video a little while ago um, that was speaking about Jennifer Hudson and Whitney Houston and uh, Brandy. I think Oprah got in that mix too. This is going to be on Moabite, but the Moorish connection. You see all that, you know, the Shriner situation, the feds, and all right, that's good. Cool. Must not and should not be avoided. Now, this goes with the video I just did about the coat of arms where you see black people on it. So a lot of um, unstudied, unlearned black folks, all right, look at that, okay. Unstudied, unlearned black folks believe, oh, this is our stolen legacy. No, you, your ancestors, if they are your ancestors, they were hoodwinked and bamboozled. Almost like what happened to the American Indians mm. at the same time. I mean, mm. you see... Hoodwinked and bamboozled. The American Indians on the coat of arms of different states, which are like different countries, too. Mm. Right? And, and folks say, well, the, the, the Moors are connected with the Moabites. Mm. Well, that is true, right? And therefore, they're black. Um, according to what we call black today, that is also true, right? Um, but you know what it also proves? It proves the Israelites are also black people. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Right? This is what happened at Baal Peor. I want to show you this right here. When you're reading about Baal Peor in this Torah portion, I know some people are going to say, oh, why are you showing this? I'm not going to show it very long. This is just searching the Internet, and they have videos like this, right? But here's how you will know them. Apologies, no, yeah, I no didn't know. Man, I didn't know he was going after in. After the flesh. And <laughs> in fact, I want to, is that, what's her name right there, Rihanna? Right? No, no man after the flesh. Right? What does that mean? You see, a lot of people are looking, well, you light skin, you dark, dark skin. Right, that shows they're not really spiritual because they can't really judge the spirit, right? the spirit of the matter. Okay, let's go down here a little bit further on, see what we got. This is just under this particular search, and it's interesting which images kind of connect. Now, there's some brothers and sisters out there among the Moabite or Moorish crowd that really needs to know the truth because they're believing that they have found it all in what they have found. And that's all, that's part of the Goshen, in a sense, that was made for you. Could they know that even the captive exile hastens to be free, right? They want to be free, right? So they, they recognize, well, since these Negroes are going to want to be free, we're going to have to have something there for them, right? And that's a part of all of this um Moabite, Moorish stuff, right, which has some truth to it, yes, but they're not going to the root of it, right? Now, when they make the connection of the Moors are connected with uh, Moab, right, that's a very, very important connection right there because Moab worked along with the Arabs. Well, they worked along with them to do what? To sell your silly asses. I mean, our ancestors. See, this is what they do also right here. They do this one right here. You see, that's a dark-skinned uh, Indian type, right? And there's a light skin. They both are Indian. They put these same ones on the coat of arms. But ask yourself, who's ruling America, right? It's white supremacy. If you don't understand white supremacy, what it is, how it works, and everything else that you think you understand will only serve to confuse you and keep you, um, they take chains off of your hands and feet, but they put it on your brain. Yeah, this, was, this was a video that we had actually linked it with. When they said, look at the black people on the coat of arms. There were Moors. That's when we were ruling. Oh, really now? Oh, really? So if somebody were to look at the coat of arms in America, too, right, that has the Indian head penny and everything, and then people in the future said, oh, that's when the Indians were ruling the white man. Would that be a true assumption? Hmm. Assumption, would that be true? Well, we would say no, that wouldn't be true. I mean, look at the Pope's coat of arms right here, all right? But it's very important that we judge no man after the flesh. Let me bring up this video right, where is this video right here? Right? It says, henceforth, 
Kungadiwa D, right? No, no man after the flesh. Second Corinthians 5 and 16. Already, some folks are tuning off. Oh, you're going to quote the Bible? Okay, tune off. This is not for you. This is from April 12, uh, 2013. I was looking up a particular vid where a brother pointed out that Brandy and uh, Jennifer um, Hudson are Moabites and talk about Prince is part Edomite, too. And a lot of these stars and celebrities, that's why, you know, you see them move into that mm. higher world, even Michael Jackson and all of that. That's why with all of their fame and... And and they say they say a lot of things out there, but they never really tell you about the truth. They never tell you right. about. So you hear about the boule, you hear about these things and these people, blah, blah, blah. and it makes perfect sense that if 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 a dark group of people avoided slavery because of treaties, if a dark group of people had to fight you because you was fighting your invader, you was fighting the invader coming over here taking your title, and they say, yeah, man, so what, man? But they with us, they with us. If a vassal of either party should be attacked by an enemy within gunshot of the forts of the other, she shall be defended as much as possible. They had to defend the United States of America, these Bay, Bayal, Bayal, Bayloose. Man, I mean, come on, man. Pretty cold work. And it leaves us right here. The invention of the Prophet Muhammad. Now, this is just from the Jesuit situation. We got the thought situation. Well, let's look at the Jesuit breakdown of it. I'll leave the link. He says, what I'm going to tell you is what I learned in secret briefings in the Vatican when I was a Jesuit brief under oath and induction. A Jesuit cardinal named Augustine Bay. Bay <laughs> showed us how desperately the Roman Catholics wanted Jerusalem. So did the Muslims at the end of the 3rd century because of its religious history and strategic location. The holy city was considered a priceless treasure. A scheme had to develop to make Jerusalem a royal Catholic city. The great untapped source of manpower that could do this was the children of Ishmael, the Ishmaelites. The poor Arabs, which the Moabites connected to, fell victim to one of the most clever plans ever devised. By the power of darkness, these Arabs, the Ishmaelites, fell to this Thoth, alias Gabriel. Early Christians went everywhere with the gospel, setting up small churches, but they met heavy opposition. Both the Jews and Roman government persecuted the believers in Christ to stop their spread, but the Jews rebelled against Rome. In 70 AD, Roman armies under G General Titus uh, smashed Jerusalem. All right, so we got, you know, most of this issue, I'm going to skip down because we're going to get with it, get with it. Let me get to it, let me get to it. Let's get to the meat of things, man. Let's get to the meat. All right. So this Cardinal Bay, the same Cardinal Bay told us this story. So let's just get to it. You got the whole link. Check it all out. A wealthy Arabian lady who was a faithful follower of the Pope played a tremendous part in this drama. She was a widow named Khadija. She gave her wealth to the church and retired to a covenant, but was given an assignment. She was to find a brilliant young man who could be used by the Vatican to create a new religion, a new religion to become the Messiah for the children of Ishmael. Khadija had a cousin named Warraqua, who was also a very faithful Roman Catholic, and Vatican placed him in a central role as Muhammad's advisor. He had tremendous influence on Muhammad. Teachers were sent to young Muhammad, and he had intensive training. You know, the story is he didn't know nothing, but this Gabriel raised him up. This Thoth raised him up. Had intensive training. These teachers gave him intensive training. Muhammad studied the works of St. Augustine, which prepared him for the great calling. The Vatican had Catholic Arabs across North America spread the story of the great of a great one who was about to rise up among the people and be chosen, chosen one of their God. While Muhammad was being prepared, 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 he was told that his enemies were the Jews, the Hebrews, Moab, Hebrews, and that the only true Christians were Roman Catholic. He was taught 
that others calling themselves Christians were actually wicked imposters and should be destroyed. See, Thoth was raising up an army to destroy Louis Mon, his big homie, the false Christ. Being raised up by Thoth, the alias Gabriel. Alright. Everything is, you know, hey. Lining on up. Muhammad began receiving divine revelations, and his wife, his wife's Catholic cousin Wurakwa helped interpret them. From this came the Quran in the fifth year of Muhammad's mission. Persecution came against his followers because they refused to worship the idols of the Kaaba. The Kaaba stone, remember? Walking around this stone, this Saturn stone, Muhammad instructed some of them to flee to Abyssinia. <laughs> where Negus, the Roman Catholic king, Negus, the Roman Catholic king, accepted them because Muhammad's view on the Virgin Mary was so close to the Roman Catholic doctrine. Man, we're going fast, but dig on it. These Muslims received protection from Catholic kings because of Muhammad's revelation. Muhammad later conquered Mecca, and the Kaaba was cleared of idols. How do you do that? History proves that before Islam came into existence, the Sabians in Arabia worshipped the moon god, who was married to the sun god. They gave birth to three goddesses who were worshipped throughout Arab world as the daughters of Allah, an idol Excavated at Hazar in Palestine, 1950, shows Allah sitting on a throne with the crescent moon on his chest. Muhammad claimed he had a vision from Allah and was told, you are the messenger, messenger of Allah. This began his career as a prophet and he received many blessings. By the time Muhammad died, the religion of Islam was exploding. The nomadic Arab tribes were joining forces in the name of Allah and, their, and his prophet uh, Muhammad. So some of uh, Muhammad's writings were placed in the Quran. Others were never published. They are now in the hands of high-ranking holy men. Astalos. Astalos. Las. In the uh, Islamic faith. Faith. But when Cardinal Baer shared this information with us, the Vatican. In the Vatican, he said, these writings are guarded because they contain information that links the Vatican to the creation of Islam. Uh-oh. Both sides have so much information on each other that if exposed, it could create such a scandal that it will be a disaster for both religions and their holy books. The Quran, in the Quran, Christ is regarded as only a prophet. If the Pope was his representative on earth, then he must be a prophet of God. This caused the followers of Muhammad to fear and respect the Pope as another holy man. The Pope moved quickly and issued bulls, papal bulls, dumb diverses, 1452. Granted the Arab generals permission to invade and conquer the nations of North Africa and the Indies, right? So now it's giving, oh, we're going to get, go against the Saracens, but really we're going against the Hebrews, the copper color races, the Arab generals, the Ishmaelites, going against the other Moors. The Vatican helped to finance the building of these massive Islamic armies in exchange for the three favors. The Vatican built up the Islamic armies for Muhammad, taught Muhammad, trained Muhammad. And this is Gabriel Thoth. This is Thoth born, Tut Moses. This is Egypt. This is Atlantis. This is 440 Hertz, one on one. One, eliminate the Jews and Christians. The latter was regarded as true believers, which they were called infidels, protect the Augustinian monks and Roman Catholics, and three, conquer Jerusalem for his holiness in the Vatican. He was all about taking down the holy city and Mount Zion, like Columbus said, and now you see why he had help. So, man, it goes into much more about this creation, but I'll leave this for you. This is called the what? Creation of the Prophet Muhammad. The Vatican connection to it. And with that, we're going to make our dismount back into this uh, Uriel Bay. All right. This is where we started. I suggest y'all check it all out. I wanted to get all this. And there's so much more to go, but it's just going to be, it's going to be crazy. But, uh, you know, you got the link. Definitely dig on it. And if you got some more drop that you uh, dig on, man, you know, shoot it to me, man. And maybe we'll go part seven with it. At some period of time. But for now, let's dig on the rest of this. Uh, you know, take it on out. Uh, Suit up. Um, but understanding the seriousness of the situation, these Moors uh, of the Royal Convocation 
uh, was again the fundamental reason for one, the formation of the corporate family trust, the national trust, um, in again what later became the United States, and two, the establishing of the federal political system for the Albion Mail, uh, as this was a part of the Moore's C3 Communications Operation Command Stratagem, or military strategy, uh, that was used to, as strange as it may sound to some, um, it was to ensure the survival of future generations. No, uh, it was to ensure the survival of Moab and Morocco. It had nothing to do with the generations of Israel. I don't know uh, that even though the Moors, uh, or the Moorish Navy rather, more specifically, fell in West Palestine uh, on the Sea of Galilee, in uh, 1795, the royal families nonetheless were still running government from behind the scenes until Civil War era reconstruction. So they were still running government behind the scenes into Civil War area. So we're talking about 17, 1800s. Behind the scenes, they're giving you all the job if you are listening to it. Uh, so initially, the congressional membership consisted of the above 13 rulers and key family members that eventually comprised 35 members, and finally the 20 observers. Uh, only the, the Bay kings, princes, and governors were eligible to serve as praesens, or president, commander-in-chief, uh, of which there were between the years of 1774 and 89, 16 to be exact. Uh, who not only did they, like presidents of the modern era, sign congressional laws, treaties, military orders, but in addition presided over judicial congressional cases. And in 1775, under the Henry Middleton and Peyton Randolph second term administration, was the beginning of the so-called infamous uh, American Revolution. Now what's very interesting about this is because of how we've been, again, miseducated and taught history, etc., we tend to look at it uh, compartmentally. In other words, we think of the American Revolution, okay, Crispus Attucks, that whole thing, and uh, Boston, uh, and uh, Paul Revere, etc. And nothing else was going on. But as I mentioned earlier, you had a 300 years continental war that was going on in many parts of the continent. Um, 300 parts, year uh, continental uh, war. What is it? Uh, Guayani, All right. 300 year continental war. The other brother said from 1511 to 1776, but we got hundreds of years of black on black, hundreds of years of more on more, con on con. Let's go. Panama, Marco Tucano Huitoto, known as Colombia, uh, Yonamam, Arwa Carib, Venezuela, uh, Utuapaque Pima, Mexico, Maya, Guatemala, uh, Arucanian, Chile, uh, Diaguita, Bolivia, and Apibon, Paraguay. Uh, so, in 1775, this American Revolution took place principally uh, in the northeast areas of Rutium, um, what is it, uh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Bethlehem, Bethlehem. Uh, and Idumia. Idumia. Rutium was actually also known as uh, Pergamos, which if uh, you read the so-called Christian Bible in Revelations, they talk about Pergamos, uh, 